FSR 3 is in a weird place. AMD announced this to compete directly with Nvidia's headlining feature that doubles your FPS. And here we are 11 months later, FSR 3 is in probably two of the most underwhelming games of 2023. And in these games, it almost feels like a beta release of the feature. Like take your checklist of settings to make sure that it's going to function properly. Like for instance, you need to make sure that you have VSync on in order to make it function, in order to make it function, as well as you need to have anti-aliasing on as well and, now you can and with all of that then you'll actually be able to essentially double your frame rate as you can see in the top left corner of the screen but the frame rate counter looks broken and even though this effect is expected by amd it doesn't matter that this feels like a beta feature or an incomplete feature within this game plus the fact that amd didn't send out fsr 3.0 frame generation out to reviewers beforehand normally when we get these sort of new features and technologies we are given things like press briefings and so on how it works, you know, what you can expect from it, what you can expect from your testing. With just launching it out into the market, there's there was none of that. Even though it's not necessary to send out things early, this does feel like a way to cloud the judgment of people and not knowing all the information about FSR 3 in general. And this might also show that AMD isn't very confident about their product that they're putting out here. This can also be like me when I reviewed it. Like there's just minimal downsides to turning it on. And if it made the game so much smoother, like check out my first impressions with it. Dude, this is sick actually, wow. I really like this. I mean, I was mostly positive about the feature and I do like the way that it looks and everything, but I also didn't fully understand what was happening in certain situations. Now the frame times look like they're messed up, but it doesn't feel like it's stuttering. So I think that's something that it's messing up with like the reporting or I couldn't give you guys all the answers that I really wanted to give in a video like that. But now it's been over two weeks since we got our hands on FSR 3 and the dust has kind of settled. It really makes me wonder, maybe a lot of you guys wonder, how have we ended up in this confusing situation with FSR 3 and why did AMD approach it like this? First, we need to start at the beginning, like what is frame generation so we can all be on the same page with this and what kinds of benefits could it have for a gaming experience? In a very simple way, what frame generation is, is basically frame interpolation. So say your game renders one frame here and then two frames here, and basically what frame generation does is take the difference between these two frames and generates one to go between them based on the data that's between these two and maybe some data that is presented by the game engine itself. This technology has been around for quite a long time within like TVs and stuff like that. On the left side, you can see every individual frame of this cat, but on the right side, the motion looks a lot smoother. Now, does it look realistic? No, but unlike TVs, gaming has a little bit of different demands. Obviously, one thing, you want to get as much FPS in a game as possible, so frame generation can be good for that because this technology can essentially double your frame rate. But also, games have a second requirement, is that they need to be responsive, and that's where latency matters a lot. And this frame generation technology does increase your latency because it has to hold, say it generated this first frame, it needs to hold this in until the second frame is also made by the game engine so that then, then it can make the frame that goes in between them. That means this frame that should have already been shown to you is just waiting in purgatory until this other frame and this generated one is complete. How Nvidia has overcome these problems, they can make sure with Nvidia Reflex to bring down the system latency to try to basically mitigate the latency that's created by using frame generation. As well, they also use an exclusive part of their new 40 series GPUs, optical flow accelerators. This is the, the part of the GPU that is actually generating the frame, doing the calculations to make that fake frame that goes in between them. So DLSS 3 frame generation being exclusive to 40 series graphics cards, Nvidia knows the hardware, it knows the technology that's available to them. This is a huge advantage for Nvidia as they develop this feature of frame generation. And that's very important to note when AMD has to integrate this into, this, into their own technology. Obviously, AMD saw that Nvidia was headlining a feature that could, you know, double your FPS and obviously that's a great marketing feature. AMD obviously wanted to hop on getting this feature working in their GPUs as well. Although AMD had to make a strategy that made frame generation for their technology unique compared to Nvidia's. Doubling and tripling your frame rate on any card that can run it, basically. And AMD being AMD, they typically make their software features available on as many GPUs as they possibly can. 
and they did not change their philosophy with this. It's available on everything from RX 5000 series on AMD's side to a GeForce RTX 20 series, but actually it's compatible with GPUs before this. It's just usually the frame rates that you're getting in the games isn't good enough to support the technology, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on in this video. Just the fact that AMD made this available on so many GPUs means that this technology had to be complicated and probably very difficult. Like one of the main things is how do you get this to run on every single GPU and not take a giant performance hit for calculating the difference between these frames and generating new ones. So AMD uses something called asynchronous compute. Basically what this does is allow the frame generation to take place at the same time as running the game, reduces the impact on the game render pipeline, basically making you not take as much of an FPS hit just from generating your frames using asynchronous compute. Now the other thing that is obviously a big worry is latency. How do you reduce the latency on every single GPU? Like, like you don't have access to Nvidia Reflex, which lowers latency on every single Nvidia GPU. So you have to figure out a way to do it in general. They didn't really explain it on AMD's GPU open website here, but they do say that interpolating adds frame latency. And this is by design. Obviously you can't really avoid this with frame generation. You have to wait for the other frame. However, FSR 3 was developed to minimize the impact of latency via built in latency reduction technology. They don't really explain how this works, but AMD somehow figured out a way to reduce latency in every single game. And you can see with frame generation on, it's 55 milliseconds, and with it off, it's 48, according to AMD's numbers here. If you want to believe it, you know, feel free. But the point is, is that this had to have been very difficult to do this on every single GPU that this FSR 3 frame generation technology is compatible with. And I emphasize that this has to be difficult because I honestly don't think AMD completely knew what they're getting into when they announced this back in November of 2022. It's very plausible they just saw that Nvidia was doing frame interpolation with their GPUs and just thought, oh, it's just frame interpolation. That won't be that hard to implement. But here we are 11 months later and FSR 3 still isn't available on the GPUs that AMD was basically advertising it to work on. It's only in two games and in the two games that it's in, it's basically a beta feature. We're still waiting on this to get into other games. And even at that point, it's still very limited, limited release. Yeah, FSR 3 is taking a long time to get out there. And I do think that AMD is in a little bit over their heads. This whole FSR 3 situation really stems back to AMD constantly playing on the back foot compared to Nvidia with their features and stuff like that. They're trying to play catch up all the time. Seems like poor management of the marketing teams or even, and this is gonna sound crazy, but clout chasing. AMD almost seems like they're clout chasing the crazy marketing of doubling your FPS that Nvidia is putting out there, but that can be excused because AMD makes FSR 3 available to all GPUs and they're very nice and everything by doing that and that excuses their weird way of going about marketing and kind of the shady stuff that they do. It's even weirder because this is all over a feature like frame generation that is generally just a marketing gimmick at this point in time. There's a lot of games where you can't use frame generation, like say in competitive games where because of the added latency that it gives to games, honestly, you don't want more latency in a competitive game, all of a sudden you can't use it in them. Also, if you're even in a single player game, if you don't have a high enough baseline FPS to use frame generation, it means that first of all, your latency is already gonna be bad in a single player game. As well, there'll be more artifacts because when you use frame generation, if you have a lower frame rate, that means that there's a greater difference between each frame and that means it's trying to make up that gap and there's going to be more artifacts because of it. Honestly, there's still a lot of situations where frame generation isn't even that useful and it ends up just being, oh, put in the marketing slide that you can double your frame rate. DLSS 3 can boost performance by an additional 2x. And Nvidia and AMD have been guilty of doing this because it looks good in slides. It looks like a big you know, improvement has been made with this generation of GPUs, but that just isn't true. And this isn't to say that AMD did a bad job with FSR 3 frame generation or anything like that. I actually think that they, on a technical side, they've been able to accomplish a lot of things, even though it's kind of still in a beta state at this point in time, 
they've done good and the, the image quality that FSR 3 frame generation puts out, I think is very impressive, especially when it can work on basically any GPU that's out there. You know, it's just from the seemingly desperate announcement back in 2022 for FSR 3, even though it wasn't even close to being done, as well as the manipulative rollout of FSR 3 in 2023, where it's only in two games that aren't that popular. As well, they're calling it a full release of FSR 3, but really this isn't ready in the games that it's in. There's tons of bugs and it's, it has a lot of issues. It being advertised as a full release and just not something that you wanna be putting out into the public. And then them not showing it to reviewers and stuff to get an accurate reading of how it is to actually inform people about this just makes it a whole weird situation. And it kind of makes me a little bit uncomfortable about how AMD is managing their marketing or even their, their their features and stuff for their GPUs. I know this is gonna be a little bit controversial, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think about kind of my opinion on what's going on here. But that's been about it for me on this topic. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.